Trania Ortho 50 was just announced a couple of weeks ago. Foma Ortho 400 is set to start hitting stores in June of 2023. Ilford has been selling their Ortho 80 Plus film since 2019. All of these films are orthochromatic films, and if you're unfamiliar with the term, it means that they are blue-green sensitive black and white films that are not sensitive to red light based on a fundamentally flawed technology that was replaced by far superior emulsions, and yet film manufacturers today are finding ways of adding these films to their catalogs for film photographers now. But why? Orthochromatic photography is basically at this point antiquated. Very few people are ever going to use it. It is a very niche product. Very few photographers are going to have a use for it outside of it just being a fun experiment. But the fact is, this is the technology that existed before the 20th century as the exclusive photographic technology. The look that at least I associate, and maybe you do as well, with some very old antique photographs comes from the fact that these were taken on orthochromatic emulsions. Now all the light that is entering to the front of your camera lens and hitting your film stock is in color, as the human eye would see it. And all film stocks, doesn't matter if they're black and white or color, any type of film, is going to react to different wavelengths of light differently. And the way that it reacts to each wavelength, or each section of light, if you want to call it that, is called its spectral response. Most modern black and white films fall into the panchromatic category, at least loosely. Some of them are more orthopanchromatic, which means that they have slightly less red sensitivity than a panchromatic film would, and some are super panchromatic films, which can actually expand slightly beyond the human visual spectrum. Originally, the spectral response of film emulsions, or photographic emulsions, was very, very limited. Silver halide crystals, which make up basically the fundamentals of black and white film, that's the main ingredient to make it work, are only sensitive to blue light naturally. The colors that a film responds to when mixed together in an equal amount will result in white being exposed on the negative. If the only color that your film is responsive to is blue, then anything that's blue is going to render as very light gray in the black and white image, or even white, whereas everything that isn't blue is going to come out very, very dark. This is especially prominent in portraits, where the subjects often appear to have very, very dark and contrasty skin, despite the fact that the photograph is obviously correctly exposed anything that you photographed using these emulsions, even though the images were black and white, it also wasn't at all reflective of what our eyes perceive. Eventually, improvements to the photographic process meant that the spectral response of film stocks could be significantly widened. <laughs> In 1873, Hermann Wilhelm Vogel discovered a process called dye sensitization. He was using some factory-made dry plates that he had bought that had been manufactured in a factory in England. And after exposing and developing them, he discovered that they were significantly more sensitive to green than he was accustomed to. There was a yellow substance on the plates themselves that, when washed off, completely eliminated the increased green sensitivity. Now, this substance had been used as an anti-halation agent, but it gave him the idea to start experimenting around with aniline dyes, adding them to photographic emulsions in an effort to try and expand spectral sensitivity. He was eventually able to get standard photographic emulsions to be sensitive not only to just green light, but to also start to be sensitive to yellow and orange light, paving the way for modern orthochromatic film stocks that you can buy today. The orthochromatic film stocks that you can buy today are based on the practically flawed technology that existed prior to the general use of either orthopanchromatic, panchromatic, or super panchromatic film stocks. Orthochromatic films do, however, tend to be sharper than panchromatic films and tend to have significantly increased contrast compared to similar speed films that are not orthochromatic. Now, even though the selection of orthochromatic film stocks is relatively small, considering how niche of a product these things are, there's actually quite a wide selection. This year alone, two additional orthochromatic film stocks have been announced to the market. 
The first is Ferrania Orto 50, which comes from one of my favorite companies, Ferrania, who make the P30 film stock. The film that they're releasing is based on a silent cinema era, an emulsion from early movies. It has very high silver content, and of course, all the other orthochromatic characteristics, including very, very fine grain, increased sharpness, and contrast. The sample images that I've seen on social media and that Ferrania has spread around for us all to look at look absolutely fantastic. They promise excellent results. One other slight downside here for any of you that are medium format first shooters, there's no medium format option. This film is only going to be available in 35 millimeter format. Now, Foma Bohemia, the same people that make the Foma Pan line of films, also announced a film stock recently. A, this time, medium format only film stock. So it's only going to be available in 120 rolls, and that is Foma Ortho 400. Most orthochromatic films tend to be under 100 ISO. However, Foma Ortho 400 is a 400 ISO film, and that's pretty much the highest orthochromatic film that I've ever run across, at least in my research. Now, information on this film stock is almost non-existent, but they are again promising increased sharpness, very, very fine grain, as well as a high silver content, and in this case, a wide exposure latitude. It's going to be very interesting to see how this film looks. Uh, there are no sample images that I could find, at least as of making this film, and so far all I've got to go on is the fact that they announced that it's going to be hitting stores in June, which I look forward to. If you want to give orthochromatic film a try, I heartily recommend that you do really any of the ones that are available on the market right now you can't go wrong with. It can be a fantastic photographic experience that can be a lot of fun. I think the most fun part about it is that it handles very differently from all the other mainstay film stocks that I've encountered. And I think that's why all these companies are bringing it out onto the market. Film photography is a bit of a novelty. It's a bit of an experimental and fun thing anyway. So having film stocks that render reality in a way that doesn't quite match up with the way our eyes see it is just plain fun. And that's why I think it's awesome that these new film stocks are coming out.